Okay guys, uh, here's my new little setup. <clears throat> uh, this is a new coil here. It's not very big. Um, I uh, wound it by filer with 200 feet on each roll of uh, 30 gauge. And then I wound another coil on the top of some extra wire that I had. Just give me some variability. So we have three independent coils there. Um, runs to a diode um, and then it charges a cap and we have the meter to read that it's just sitting 4.2 millivolts um, let's see what else this coil here is the older coil I was using I'm just using that to drive the wheel um, just a little simple switch the two batteries and the read switch here I just have it in a uh, read relay I left it together because I'm going to use the coil as a sensor of some sort later on or maybe to operate a transistor to drive this. Uh, and then over here we have a reed switch for uh, this coil. So this coil here is just getting its own voltage into the cap from the rotor spinning and then the reed switch connects through here over to here. The reed switch crosses across the coil so what it does is as the wheel turns generates a little voltage into these caps and then at a particular time the reed switch shorts out the coil with the cap and then releases it and dumps the voltage back into the caps um, I got this set up alternating north and south out um, I could have them all aiming out um, but I found that for this if if they're all aiming out and we go past the reed switch and it pulses it could pull on this magnet and then it passes the reed switch pulses pulls on this magnet or the other way I can move the switch over here and as the magnet passes a coil it'll pulse there and repel it uh, depending on how I have the battery set up backwards or forward um, but I got better speed out of it by alternating the magnets and having the pulse happen in between the magnets. So as it comes around, it hits the reed switch, and from here to here, that pulse lasts, and you get more out of it. Um, the other way, you know, if they were all single polarity out and pulsing on each one, I'd have eight uh, pulses, but this way... Uh, she only pulses in four spots. Uh, the read relay here, this little thing here is a, a post that has a diametric magnet on it and when you turn it you can polarize the read switch to only activate on the north or the south magnet. So it only happens here, 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 and here. Um, but I get more speed out of it. So I guess it's a plus to have alternating poles coming out of the rotor. Um, let's see. Let's get it running. Let me give it a real spin. And this is just going to keep the rotor running to experiment with this coil. Uh, we can see voltage being generated into the little caps through this coil. Um, the way I have it right now is the two bifilers are in series, so it's one long coil minus the one on the outside is just neutral, and she's over one volt. Now I don't have this reed switch in position yet, close enough to activate. There's also <clears throat> a diametric here that I can turn, and it polarizes the reed switch to only activate on either the north or the south, depending on which way you do it. And if you fine-tune this, you can get this switching uh, uh, down to a really fine pulse or long pulses or opposite pulses, uh, depending. Um, we're up to 1.25 volts. Uh, she's just about at uh, the highest speed she's going to get, just about. <clears throat> now what I found neat is I got this little, it's like a 
I, I used uh, twisty bag ties because they're a soft iron and uh, put them in a shrink tube. But I can stick this in here to air core right now until I insert this. And the voltage rises. I take it out. She goes down some. Just stick it in the end a little bit. And she rises. She goes up above 2 volts if I haven't put it in all the way. But we'll run an air core for right now. Um, now, as we get this reed switch closer in, just until it activates. Voltage jumps up massively. I got the two capacitors or 50 volt caps. I got them in series to handle above 50 volts. A um, little bit of drag on the wheel. Um, just got the two AAA batteries, three volts running this coil. Um, it's not real efficient, but it, it runs the motor. But I thought that was pretty cool that we could take that one and a half volts that this generates into these caps and then at a certain time with the switch short out the coil on the caps and then release and then you get 55 volts now with a much larger coil um, I can imagine those volts being up into the hundreds of volts so the capacitors are going to have to be uh, fairly decent size in voltage I'd probably say 150 to 250 volt range for sure um, maybe even more but I thought that was pretty cool let me move the switch out of the way and it should go back down to the 2 volts um, if we put the iron core back in. Let's see she's up to two volts. I'll bring the reed back in. Ninety one volts. That's amazing. You can hear the wheel dragging down. I'm pulling it out, you can see the voltage drop. But I thought that was a neat conversion, just having the reed switch short out that little bit of voltage across the coil and get these high voltages. So there might be some trick to this. guys talk to you later oh one more thing I can show you if I, if I tune this magnet around it alters things so we can fine tune how the switch is activating a little too far and also if you move it just a little bit Gives it, uh, gives it a place where you're going to get the most voltage. Seems to be well, she's bogging down now. my little setup. I thought it was pretty cool how I could get a lot of voltage out of there. Alright guys, talk to you later.